exhibitions three years running at the Redfern Gallery in 1943, 44 and 45 was really a very impressive start for any young man's career. Um, it was a, a, a well-known place for the, where you went to see new art and it had both a ground floor and a basement area as it still does have today and um, uh, perhaps with a note of jealousy the two Roberts, Cahoon and McBride, would refer to it as Min's Bargain Basement because Minton was doing rather well with his sales at that time. But simmering beneath the surface were mounting tensions as Minton struggled to conceal his growing but unrequited feelings for Cahoon, much to McBride's irritation. He could often be found out here on the stairs, weeping or drunkenly demanding to be let back into the studio after one more confrontation with McBride. I think it must have been with a huge sense of relief that Minton fled to Cornwall in the summer of 1944. Sanctuary came in a gypsy caravan belonging to his friend, the poet W.S. Sidney Graham. And it was here that Minton came to pass six blissful weeks. Sidney Graham had already established contact with the burgeoning art scene over the way in St. Ives. He felt a great affinity with painters, and in particular with Minton's neo-romantic works, often pinning up reproductions above his writing desk. I find the trees down in the dell below the caravans becoming confused with a Minton vision, wrote Sidney Graham, observing a newly invigorated Johnny from the one he'd known in London. During the long summer days of 1944, Minton roamed the fields and coves, not to mention the pubs along this coast. The light and warmth refreshed him, and the intricate perspectives all around revived his desire to paint. This Cornish retreat began to affect his attitude towards landscape, a move away from the introspective melancholy of the neo-romantic towards a new horizon, one, he said, that offered the promise of long, strange journeys to elaborate, exotic lands. God, how I love the sea, Minton wrote to a friend back in London. Treacherous, cold, impersonal, caught by the moon and shifted in the giant tides, the waves breaking forever with the subtle cruelty of terrible indifference. The paintings Minton produced from Cornwall are amongst my favorite works. What I find most appealing is just how different they are from each other. You can almost chart his progression from painting to painting as he tried out new styles. I think that's the moment he comes alive. It's the introduction of color. He's got an extraordinary color palette. That's when he's embracing certain avant-garde elements and incorporating them very confidently into a figurative language. The Cornish idyll came to an end when Minton felt the inexorable pull back to London. But exhilarated by the Cornish light and colour, Minton saw London afresh and he returned to capture the Thames side settings he had depicted just a few years earlier. Only now he saw them through new eyes. It was these pictures that saw Minton labelled as an urban romantic, but what I love about them is that they seem to represent a familiar tussle between the melancholy and the optimistic. We can see his eye for the tumble down and the rustic.